Well, hi there. Dinosaurs are some of the most amazing creatures to ever walk the planet. There is a reason we have devoted the entire month of December, the most important month of the YouTube calendar, just to dinosaurs. We recently released a video covering all of the major groups of dinosaurs and the largest and smallest members of each group. But if you watched that video carefully, you might have noticed that many popular dinosaur groups were missing. And they were missing because they aren't dinosaurs. The reality is that while dinosaurs were large prehistoric reptiles, not all large prehistoric reptiles are dinosaurs. In fact, many of your favorite large prehistoric reptiles are not dinosaurs at all. And today, I want to cover five of the most popular large prehistoric reptiles that aren't actually dinosaurs, but that people often think are. As an adult, I fear that we too often discuss unimportant subjects like the weather, celebrity gossip, and current events while we fail to ask the really important questions. Like, what's your favorite dinosaur? Well, I've been asking this question often, and one of the most common answers that I get is pterodactyl, which is a totally reasonable answer. Pterosaurs are awesome, but they aren't dinosaurs. That said, they are the closest relatives of the dinosaurs on this list. Like dinosaurs, pterosaurs are diapsids, meaning that they have two holes on each side of the skull behind the eye. That will be the case for most of this list. Pterosaurs, like dinosaurs, are members of the clade Archosauria, a group that today includes only the last group of living dinosaurs and their closest living relatives, which people often think are dinosaurs, but aren't. In the past, the Archosauria were much more diverse. So these aren't the only diapsids on this list, and they aren't the only archosaurs on this list, but they are the only non-dinosaurs on this list that are also part of the clade Ave Metatarsalia. And the dinosaurs and the pterosaurs were the only members of the Ave Metatarsalia to survive the extinction event at the end of the Triassic. So it isn't too surprising that these two are the best known members of the group. Pterosaurs can easily be distinguished from the dinosaurs by their featherless wings made out of a really long finger. In fact, the word pterodactyl means wing finger. If you look closely at the wing of a pterosaur, you will notice that the bulk of the wing is constructed of really long hand bones called metacarpals and a super long ring finger. The other three fingers protrude from the top of the wing and they have no pinky finger. This wing structure differentiates them from other flighted vertebrates like birds that have highly fused hand bones with feathered wings and bats which have wings including all of the fingers except for the thumb. And while the wing structure is more similar to a bat wing than it is to a bird wing, it is differentiated not only by the skeletal structure but also by the structure of the wing membrane itself. Pterosaur wing membranes were very complex. Most of the wing was composed of a crisscross of layered fibers called actinofibrils that gave the wing rigidity and were structured really a lot like carbon fiber. The wing membrane also contained layers of thin muscle, unique looping blood vessels, and in at least some groups, air sacs from their respiratory system. Like birds, they had air sacs in their hollow bones and a keeled sternum. Their bodies were covered with hair-like fibers called pycnofibers, which may have been very similar to down feathers. And some even had keratinous beaks instead of teeth, though teeth were also very common in the pterosaurs. But despite their similarity to other flighted vertebrates, you're not going to confuse the pterosaurs with anything else. And while they aren't dinosaurs, they are probably the closest relatives to dinosaurs that you've ever heard of. The next two members of this list are not anywhere near as closely related to dinosaurs as are the pterosaurs. In fact, one of them is more closely related to you than it is to dinosaurs. But next on our list are the mosasaurs. Interestingly, the word dinosaur means terrible lizard, which is a very poor name as they're not lizards and they're probably the coolest things that have ever lived. So not terrible and not lizards. But I guess that not being lizards would make them terrible lizards. 
And while we're talking about things that aren't dinosaurs, today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, which is no dinosaur. This is the cutting edge of wallets. It is shielded, so you don't have to worry about people being able to scan your cards when you walk by them, when you're in a crowded place or something like that. It is very minimalistic, small. You're carrying cards, maybe a little bit of cash. You can put a money clip on there. This, this is the strap. There's also clip option that you can have. And that's really all you need to be carrying. You don't need the giant dinosaur wallets of the past. Welcome to the future. And right now, you can even save up to 40% at ridge.com slash Clint. So if you want to join the future, ridge.com slash Clint. And if you really want to head into the future, you can have not just the wallet, but also this rad new key case that they just released. You can even get them together as part of what is called the daily driver kit. And uh, I gotta say, this is, this is the way to not be a dinosaur. You're not carrying around jingly keys like a dinosaur, are you? Today, there are two big clades of extant reptiles. The Archelosauria, which includes the crocodilians, turtles, and birds, and the Lepidosauria, which contains the tuataras and lizards, including the snakes. We have a whole video about this clade if you want to check it out. Well, the dinosaurs are not only not lizards, they're not even Lepidosaurs. So they're really terrible lizards. Like pterosaurs, which means winged lizards, dinosaurs are actually archosaurs and are thus part of the Archelosauria. So I guess people were a bit enthusiastic about calling all of these Archelosaurs lizards. Well, the Mosasaurs, which people often confuse with dinosaurs, are not dinosaurs, but they actually are lizards. Other than maybe Komodo dragons, they are the only lizards I hear people frequently mistake for dinosaurs. And understandably so, this is a huge ancient reptile, and encountering one during a swim would probably be pretty terrible. Though they were nowhere near as big as they were depicted in Jurassic World. Though they probably did eat dinosaurs from time to time, as these were one of the most dominant marine predators of the late Cretaceous. Interestingly, they really came into their own in the late Cretaceous, following the near extinction or total extinction of two other groups of large marine non-dinosaurs that we'll be discussing later. And these guys were very well adapted to life in the ocean. They probably even gave birth to live young, like many other lizards and snakes, as opposed to needing to return to shore to lay eggs like sea turtles and other archelosaurs, at least that we know of today. They had webbed fingers and toes, and a crescent-shaped paddle at the end of their tails for propulsion, like a shark. They sort of looked like a combination of a whale and a water monitor, though they were much more closely related to water monitors than to whales, but closer to the size of whales. Interestingly, they had a very flexible head morphology, like monitor lizards and snakes, allowing them to swallow really large prey whole. Like other diapsids, they have two holes on each side of the skull behind the eye, like other lizards, the bottom of the lower hole is missing, opening that hole into essentially an arch. So the Mosasaurs were terrifying lizards of the late Cretaceous, the source of a terrible end for many a dinosaur, no doubt. But in reality, they were just giant carnivorous sea lizards with shark tails, which when you put it that way, has to qualify them as being one of the coolest groups of animals that has ever existed. But it can't be your favorite dinosaur. And neither can this. This large ancient reptile is a Dimetrodon. It comes in about every variety pack of dinosaurs, but as you've probably already determined, it isn't a dinosaur at all. In fact, from a relatedness standpoint, it would make more sense to include this in a package of plastic army men than a package of dinosaurs. Because Dimetrodons are more closely related to you and Sarge than they are to T-Rex or Stegosaurus. Because this isn't a dinosaur. Heck, it isn't even a diapsid. So it's probably good that they didn't add sore to its name because it is a super terrible lizard. The word Dimetrodon means two measures of teeth, which is a fitting name because they have some teeth of very different lengths, something they have in common with mammals. And being part of the synapsid clade, synapsids meaning that they have just one hole on each side of the skull behind the eye, like mammals, having teeth of different sizes is not entirely surprising. For Dimetrodons to even be considered reptiles would require you and your Labradoodle to be reptiles as well, and I'm fine with that. 
In addition to those different teeth sizes in Synapsid skull, other things you might notice to identify a Dimetrodon would be its splayed quadrupedal stance, not erect like in the dinosaurs, and that giant sail on their backs. Now, some of the spinosaurid dinosaurs also had a back sail, but again, they had diapsid skulls, erect posture, and less differentiation in tooth sizes. Dimetrodon also lacks the antorbital fenestra, the hole between the eye and the nose seen in the spinosaurids. And not only was Dimetrodon not closely related to the dinosaurs, but it also went extinct about 40 million years before the dinosaurs first appeared. So they aren't dinosaurs, arguably they aren't even reptiles, and they pre-existed dinosaurs by almost as much as T-Rex pre-existed you. But I think it's time to get back to things that aren't lizards or dinosaurs, but that have lizards in their names anyway. Plesiosaurs. Plesiosaurs means near to lizards. Which, compared to Dimetrodon, is true both in terms of relatedness and temporally. But they aren't lizards or even lipidosaurs, and I've never seen a lizard that looks anything like this. The closest would be the Mosasaurs, that largely outcompeted the Plesiosaurs in the middle of the Cretaceous. So maybe they're just uh, near to being able to compete with the giant sea lizards. I can live like that. But plesiosaurs are another large ancient reptile that often comes in your mixed bag of dinosaurs that isn't a dinosaur. Though it probably is an archelosaur, so it is much more closely related to dinosaurs than were the last two. And it's more closely related to turtles than it is to lizards. And these do have a body shape more like that of a sea turtle, with four flippers used for propulsion and a relatively short tail. While plesiosaurs are best known for having small heads and long necks, many also had relatively short necks and big heads, looking a bit like mosasaurs but without that big long swimming tail. The long-necked plesiosaurs are referred to as having a plesiosauromorph build, where the short-necked plesiosaurs have a pliosauromorph build. These terms, though, are purely descriptive, as they're not differences that are characteristic of different clades of plesiosaurs. Plesiosaurs were particularly successful during the Jurassic and early Cretaceous, until they were largely replaced by the Mosasaurs. The smallest of the plesiosaurs were only about a meter and a half long, around 5 feet, but some did get up to about 15 meters, which is almost 50 feet long. The long-necked plesiosaurs appeared to have fed primarily on fish and cephalopods, though how they hunted is very much up for debate, especially given recent research that has shown that their long necks were relatively rigid. The short-necked plesiosaurs, on the other hand, were apex predators that hunted large prey. While all modern archelosaurs lay eggs, it has long appeared unlikely that plesiosaurs did, as their fins lack multiple points of articulation that would be needed to move on land, and also the fact that some were as big as whales and probably could not survive beaching themselves to lay eggs. More recent findings show that they likely gave birth to a single live offspring and then cared for it much like modern whales. So while nobody has seen Nessie making a nesty, if she is a plesiosaur, she could totally be out there raising her baby right now. Probably not, though. And that brings us to the last group of dinosaurs that are not dinosaurs on this list. Though I do have a bonus group for you as well. The ichthyosaurs. Fish lizards. Now, I can make an argument that these were fish, as all tetrapods can be classified as fish. But again, this isn't a lizard. Though these did look somewhat like the mosasaurs, but I would argue even more perfectly adapted to that sea life. Really hitting their stride in the Triassic and early Jurassic, before the rise of the plesiosaurs and later the mosasaurs. And these really were a lot like toothed whales, with many being 2 to 4 meters, about 6 to 14 feet, but some reaching sizes over 20 meters, almost 70 feet. These look basically like dolphins or beaked whales, except with their tail flukes oriented vertically instead of horizontally. And this probably has a lot to do with their land-dwelling ancestors. You see, most tetrapods have a splayed stance. It isn't because it is easy to hold your body splayed, but because fish move side to side. When they moved onto land, they kept that side to side spinal flexibility. And having splayed limbs allows you to run with a side-to-side -side fish swimming motion. Mammals and dinosaurs are somewhat unique in that they have an erect stance, putting their legs directly beneath their body. When you stand erect, it is easier to hold your body, but side-to-side -side movement is not beneficial. 
Thus, land mammals, and probably some dinosaurs, evolved in up and down spinal flexion, allowing them to run with their legs under their bodies. And that is why, when the ancestors of whales returned to the water, they evolved horizontal flukes that could utilize that up and down mammalian spinal flexion. And if the ichthyosaurs had actually been dinosaurs, they probably would have done the same. But ichthyosaurs are not dinosaurs. In fact, ichthyosaurs may be the most distantly related group to the dinosaurs of anything on this list, you know, except for the Dimetrodons. Ichthyosaurs do appear to be diapsids, but their exact relationship to the other diapsids is a bit difficult to determine. But the fact is that their land-dwelling tetrapod ancestors almost certainly had a sprawling and not erect stance. And thus, when they returned to the water, they maintained that side-to-side -side spinal flexion and subsequently evolved a vertical tail. But functionally, these were basically toothed whales with small hind limbs, which do occasionally appear on toothed whales, though they're generally not present. Many had dorsal fins like dolphins, but not all of them, and some were as big as sperm whales. They gave live birth. They were even likely endothermic, using energy from food to warm their bodies. So that rounds out our list of the top five dinosaurs that aren't really dinosaurs. But I promised you an honorable mention. I've never heard anybody list these as their favorite dinosaurs. But when I tell people that there is still one group of dinosaurs alive today, people often say, oh yeah, the crocodiles, right? And that is why the crocodilians are going to get an honorable mention. Crocodilians are not the only surviving lineage of dinosaurs, though they are the closest living relatives to the only surviving dinosaur lineage. And an argument can certainly be made that the crocodilians are every bit as cool as any lineage of dinosaurs, especially when you factor in their extinct relatives, some of which were many times larger than any crocodilian alive today. Some of them lived their entire lives on land. Some were even herbivores. And interestingly enough, those terrestrial forms repeatedly evolved blade-like teeth for slicing through prey, as opposed to the cone-shaped teeth seen in most, but not all, modern crocodilians. And I will get into the explanation for that in our video covering all of the extant crocodilians, which will be coming out very soon, you know, in case you need a reason to subscribe and click that little bell. As for that living lineage, well, those would be the little feathered Manny Raptoran dinosaurs that we covered in uh, this video. And if you're wondering why that one group of dinosaurs and the crocodilians didn't go extinct when all of the other dinosaurs and everything else on this list did, well, we have a video coming out on that later this month. Happy Dinosaur December! As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. You okay, Will? Oh, sorry, I fell asleep. <laughs> you know it's interesting. Did you take some notes on your dreams? Yeah. Good. ACSRSARS. Platypuses kind of swim like this with their little webbed front legs. So. One more time. <laughs> it's, they look ridiculous.